Hi, this is Easy Does It and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about how I set up my Raspberry Pi 5 to be used as my everyday desktop. My setup guide starts from how to get the imager to first install. Then I'll show you how to set up and customize your desktop. Then we'll talk about overclocking, other issues. And then I'll show you how to set up Pi apps, Snap Store, and other apps and games that I prefer. And finally, I'll talk about the Raspberry Pi distros that I've used. So let's move on to the setup guide. In this guide, we'll cover from installing the Pi imager to first boot. We're going to do a Google search for Raspberry Pi 5. And from there, we're going to select raspberrypi.com. From there, we'll select software and uh, you'll pick, in my case, download for Windows. We'll click the download, click yes to install. And we'll just wait for the message to come up and start the installation. Leave Run Raspberry Pi Imager checked and click Finish. Make sure you've inserted your drive to write the Raspberry Pi image. You can boot from USB with Raspberry Pi 5. Once the Raspberry Pi Imager starts running, you want to choose your device, which in our case will be the Raspberry Pi 5. And then from there, you want to choose your OS. In our case, we're going to choose the Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit version. The Raspberry Pi 5 can boot from USB, so you don't need to use a micro SD card. So as you can see here, I'm using a 250 gigabyte drive, and it's really a crucial P3 NVMe drive attached to a USB adapter. Click Next and click No for OS customization. Click Yes to start writing to the disk you selected. The imager will now write and verify the OS to your chosen drive. I'm going to speed up the video to where the imager is verifying the OS. This is the real-time speed of the imager verifying the NVMe drive that's attached by USB. So it's going to definitely be faster than a micro SD card. We'll let this finish up and move on to first boot up of your Raspberry Pi OS. You'll be greeted with the welcome screen upon first boot and you want to just click next. You're going to set up your country, your language and your time zone. I'm also selecting English language and US keyboard. Create your username and enter a password. Click Next, and now, if you need to, you can set up your Wi-Fi network. I'm going to skip this and click Next to select Chromium as my default browser. Click Next again to update software. I'm going to speed this up while it downloads the updates. Now the updates are installing. Click OK and restart your Raspberry Pi. Next, we'll move on to setting up your desktop and desktop preferences. In this section of the video, we're going to talk about setting up your screens, setting up your display preferences, setting up your Bluetooth devices, setting up your printer, specifically Dell printer, setting up how to get your desktop icons, and how to fix a Chrome issue if you run into it. Now that we're in our desktop, we're going to right click on our mouse and select desktop preferences. And we'll just wait for it to load. And you can see there's a wastebasket, there's mounted disks. And if you see, the default is set for medium screens. So if you want to make it bigger, you go to larger screens. Or if you want to make it smaller, you go to small screens, right? Now, if you see here, I'm going to switch this to dark mode. And you can see the color changes. And here you can see I can change the location of my desktop, which I'm going to change. And you can see the menu goes up there. And I want to change it to the bottom. So I'm going to move it down there. And you can see you can make the icons larger or smaller. I'm going to leave it that size there. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the wastebasket and mounted disk to desktop 2. Okay, now that we've finished, we're going to go to Screen Configuration. You can see here, you can move the screens around. 
and hit apply if you need to make changes and you can see my first screen is a 1440p which I have on my left and then I have a 1080p on my right so I don't need to move any of those so I'm going to leave mine as is but if you need to change it you can move it around. One way to create a desktop icon is to select the item through menu, right click on it and select add to desktop. Another way to add a desktop icon is to go to your file explorer, go to your file root system, select USR, select share, then select applications. As an example, I want Firefox on my desktop, so I'm going to try to drag and drop it, but what you'll see is I'll get an error. So what you need to do is copy it to your desktop. Let's try to run Firefox. What you'll notice, you'll get this execute file message. Now, to get rid of that message, we need to go into Edit, Preferences, and then in general, we want to check the box that says don't ask options on launch executable file. Once we make these changes, you can now double click into your icon and open your application as normal. Okay, so now we're moving on to setting up our Bluetooth devices. So you want to left click on the Bluetooth icon and select add device and as you can see I'm adding my mouse and then I will add my keyboard on my keyboard I have to enter a code and you'll see it all goes successfully To set up my Dell printer, which is a Dell C1760WN, I follow the instructions on this page. The links are below. What you'll need to do is copy the three files, which you see I've done before. And what you'll notice, this is actually for 32-bit driver, but it still works in a 64-bit system. You just need to run the lines in the terminal in the exact order shown. If you get an error, you may need to change the terminal directory to the download folder. From menu, you want to select preference then printer setting. And then from there, you want to select add a printer. I'm adding this printer even though it's there already, just to show you how it's done. I'm going to select my printer from the network printer dropdown. I'm going to leave the first app socket as the default and hit forward. It's now going to search for the drivers which we had installed earlier. Select the exact driver, which is in my case is a C1760, and hit forward. Finally, hit apply to save the changes, but in my case, I'm just going to cancel because again, I already have this printer set up. You should run a test print to see if everything is running fine. You just finished setting up your monitors and decide to open up Chrome, but it's too large for the screen. All you got to do is unplug your, for example, 1080p monitor and let Chrome open up on the single monitor, resize it, replug in that screen, and then it will properly resize and you'll have no issues using Chrome anymore. In this section, we're going to talk about overclocking, the USB ports, USB power, and active cooler. So let's talk about overclocking. I originally had my Raspberry Pi 5 overclocked to 2900 megahertz and it held for several days and then it failed and then I went to 2875, then 2850, then 2825, then 2800, then 2700, then 2600 and I figured at that point I'm going to leave it at stock. So for whatever reason my overclock will no longer hold. So be careful about overclocking your Raspberry Pi 5. 
Your USB ports may be tight, so just be very careful plugging anything into it. It should get looser over time. With the official Raspberry Pi USB PD enabled power supply, you should have 1.6 amps of power across all four ports. If you exceed the 1.6 amps, what can happen is you'll lose a screen. You'll hear a click from your speakers and the screen will go gray. And if you draw too much, you might lose, if you have dual screens, you'll lose one screen and you'll lose the other. And the way to get it back is to remove the USB device. Alternatively, a powered USB hub will prevent this from happening as well. I have a Wavelink 7 port powered 3.0 USB hub attached to my Raspberry Pi 5. Here you can see the active cooler fan behavior. You can see it below 50C, it's not spinning. And then at 50C, it's at 30%, at 60C, 50%, 67.5 at 70, and 75C at 100%. And if you can read the rest yourself to get a sense of how it works. Anyone else notice that the active cooler can sometimes have this weird shaking when powered off? In this section of the video, I'm going to show you how to install and set up Pi Apps, Snap Store, Quack, and MAME. We're going to do a Google search for Pi Apps. Scroll down and you'll see the Install Pi Apps and click the Copy button. Open your terminal and paste it in there and let the Pi Apps install. I sped up the installation, but as you can see, it automatically adds a desktop icon. So now I'm going to go through and install my preferred apps. I'm going to speed this up, but you can see what I've installed and you can choose what you want to install. Just because Pi Apps can install an application doesn't mean it will necessarily work on the Raspberry Pi 5. If an app doesn't successfully install, you can try again and it may install the second time. We're going to do a Google search on how to install Snap Linux. Navigate to Snapcraft.io. Accept and visit site and scroll down till you see the Raspberry Pi OS. Scroll down and copy the lines into your terminal. I've sped this section up, but we are now at the sudo reboot section of the lines. We'll now do sudo snap install core and wait for that to install. And then we'll finally do sudo snap install snap store. Finally, we get a confirmation message for the installation. We also get the confirmation for the installation of the Snap Store. I've opened the Snap Store and again, just like PyOps, just because you can install it doesn't necessarily mean you can use it. That'll work rather. So definitely look through here and look at what you like. These are the applications I have installed from the Snap Store. On my desktop, I have my Guac Terminal, so I'll show you how to install and set up your Guac Terminal. We're going to open a new terminal and type sudo apt install guac, and we're going to wait for it to install. I'll speed up the video. We're going to click Menu, Preferences, then Guac Preferences. I'm checking the Start Guac at Login box. I'm not sure, is it Quack or Guac? Someone let me know if which one's correct. From the main window, we can select our geometry. I like to have my Quack on the right. Also, you can change the height and the width as well as the displacement in pixel. Next, we'll go to the appearance menu on the left. I unselect use system fixed font and use my own font size. Next, select background image. 
To get my own background image, I'm going to USR Share Wallpapers. I just selected Moonlight as an example. In Effects, you want to adjust the transparency. Next, we're going to install the emulator MAME by opening a terminal and typing sudo apt install MAME. In order to add ROMs to the MAME, we're going to create a folder in a user called MAME, and then inside that folder, we're going to create a folder called ROMs. I added a desktop shortcut for MAME. When I start MAMES and I click on Available, you'll notice there are no ROMs available because we haven't added any. I'm going to open up my current installation of MAME and you'll see I have 112 games and I'm going to run Pac-Man really quickly for you. You can go to Raspberry Tips to find links to ROMs. Raspberry Connection has a list of games that don't need emulators. In this section, I'm going to talk about the Raspberry Pi 5 distributions I've tried. Those are Raspberry Pi OS, Ubuntu, Armbian, MX Linux, and Android. And then I'm also going to talk about whether the Raspberry Pi 5 4GB or 8GB is suitable for all of these distributions. And finally, I'll talk about which one of those are my favorite OSs. Raspberry Pi OS shows memory in the range of 830 megabytes for both Conky and for NeoFetch. Ubuntu shows about 930 megabytes in NeoFetch, but over one gigabyte in Conky. Armium showed about one gigabit in NeoFetch, but over two in Conky, and that was in both the KDE and the Cinnamon versions of the OS. MX Linux showed about 1 gigabit for both NeoFetch and Conky. I didn't get that far with Android, and it was the only system that made me boot from micro SD, so this is all I have. In terms of the 4 gigabyte or 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5, I think if you choose the Armbium OS, you want to go with the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5. All the other OSs will be fine with the 4 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 5. The Raspberry Pi 5 OS is my main OS that I use every day for my main computer. One of my favorite OSs is MX Linux and I've used it before to revive old laptops. In the Pi version, we have the Conkey Manager, which really adds some nice features. Did you know you could reduce the shutdown wattage? Just follow the instructions. My wattage before was 1.76 watts, while after it was 0 watts or unmeasurable. My setup includes the Geekworm dual fan case, Hopog DVR, Pilot USB adapter, Crucial P3 NVMe drive, Yeti X microphone, OBS Studios for video capture, Shotcut for video editing, Audacity for audio, LibreOffice Writer for editing, and LibreOffice Impressions for presentations. I want to thank you for watching this video and I would thank my wife for putting up with me making this video. As of December 16th, I've used Raspberry Pi 5 as my main computer and it's worked out pretty well. The only thing I miss is specific Steam games. My Raspberry Pi 5 was used to make this whole video.